Welcome, nature lovers, to the way out of town forest, a lively forest in the vast regions of Oregon, a place where all kinds of creatures, as far as the eye can see, can roam freely amongst the trees and bushes located miles from civilization's man-made domain. Before we begin our story, let us travel back for some context, shall we? Flashback. Ooh. On July 21st, 1996, a young adult beaver named Norbert Beaver had met his new love interest named Tree Flower, who he spent the entire day with doing romantic things like eating stuffed jalapenos, watching fireworks, and singing romantic songs about each other. Norbert and Treeflower got to know each other throughout the day and found how much they had in common in liking the same stuff and such. Norbert also got the chance to perform music with Treeflower and her band, the friendly Chartreuse Bubblegum Machine, along with Norbert's younger brother by four minutes, Daggett. After long hours of performing music for the large crowd that gathered near Norbert and Daggett's dam, Norbert and Treeflower finished performing as the night came to a close. The two beavers decided to stay for the rest of the night as they did what Norbert and Daggett usually loved doing every night, eating stuffed jalapenos from a jar and watching crummy B-horror movies starring his favorite actor, Oxnord Montalvo, and the tree flower would spend the night at his den. The following morning, tree flower got up bright and early to go back with her band, but not before giving Norbert one last kiss on the cheek and a flower for him to have before she left. And before she did leave, she goes into the kitchen, grabs a piece of paper, and starts writing a note to Norbert and sticks it to his window. Later that morning, Dagger woke Norbert up as they both found that Tree Flower and her band left. Norbert reads the note and becomes lovestruck, while Dagger thinks she dumped him as the two brothers got into an argument about it. Flash forward to August 16th, 1996. Tree Flower decided that she would build a dam and move into the forest so that she would see her beloved boyfriend in person again and wrote him another letter that said the following. Dear Norby, it's me, Tree Flower. I miss you so much. So I decided that I should come visit you to see how you and your brother have been doing. Not a day has gone by that I haven't thought about you and your amazing personality. You really are the best beaver I've ever met, and I really want to see you again. Love, Tree Flower. XOXO. With hearts drawn near her name, and a kiss mark on the corner of the letter from her. Oh. Isn't that nice? We now return you to the current date that is now September 15th, 1996, at night. Around three weeks after Tree Flower and Norbert were finally reunited, Norbert was watching the killer shark on the couch by himself, while Daggett was already asleep upstairs clearly not wanting to deal with another audio like that again. As Norbert was watching the movie, his mind couldn't help but wander as he thought about himself and Tree Flower spending romantic times together in Hawaii like the loving couple they are. His heart throbbed at the thought of this, and he decided that he would give Tree Flower a call on the moose-shaped telephone that Daggett owns. He goes into the kitchen, grabs it off the table, sets it back down on the couch, and dials her number. Hi, Norby. 
Hi, <laughs> <Hey>, tree flower. <laughs> Norbert says with a bit of shakiness in his voice, but kept his smile, knowing that he had nothing to worry about. He continued the conversation with... Uh, how, uh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, Norby. I'm just sitting here styling my hair beautifully, since I know you love it. <laughs> Treeflower said while giggling softly. She secretly made it her desire to make Norbert happy in every way she could, because she already knew he thought the same thing about her. Whether it be small acts of kindness, like complimenting her, or big things like the day they met when he performed with her and her band. That's good, that's good. I'm just sitting here watching horror movies and, uh... Enjoying myself? Norbert says a little bit more calm while sinking further and further into the couch in relaxation. I was just gonna tell you that your hair always looks beautiful. Mm. Oh, Norby. <laughs> the Lady Beaver giggles some more while blushing. You know, you have nice hair too. I would love to play with it sometime. She continued while twirling hers with her finger slowly. So, how's the uh, whole moving situation going for you? Oh, I've actually already gotten all my stuff moved to the new dam now, so it's nice and furnished. You know, you should really see my bedroom because I think you'll love how it looks. Treeflower tells Norbert sweetly and lovingly. Tell you what, how about you and I go hang out at some point tomorrow? It's a date. Norbert suggested, while blushing and resting his head on the couch arm. Tree Flower blushed and got very happy and said, Oh, I'd love to. See you tomorrow, my handsome stud muffin. while she kissed the phone, trying to kiss him as if he was really there before hanging up. Norbert hangs off soon after, and placed the phone back into the kitchen, before going back on the couch, and smiled to himself as he melds into the couch some more. One hour later, Norbert starts to get more and more sleepy, as his eyelids became more and more heavy, until finally he succumbs to the tiredness and falls asleep right onto the couch. His mind is in a relaxed state of sleepiness and mellowness, knowing that he had nothing to worry about and that his goddess tree flower would be right there to bless his very sleepy thoughts all throughout the night. Just then, however, as Norbert is fast asleep, his front incisors start growing longer and longer. It seemed that our beaver forgot the most important beaver rule, and that's to always chew. So, but however, Norb doesn't know it yet, being out like a light. It is now the following morning, September 16th, 1996. Norbert finally wakes up after a nice relaxing sleep. He was having romantic dreams of him and Tree Flower together, but was ruined by the sound of a telephone playing on the television. <sighs> oh, that was an amazing sleep. Norbert yawns as he stretches his arms to wake up. Daggett himself wakes up and notices his brother's teeth have grown. It's at this moment Norbert finally noticed his lawn teeth, and unlike his brother, is quite impressed with it. Norbert tells Daggett that he forgot to chew, and Daggett reminds him of what happens when he grows his teeth too long. However, his brother does not care and takes a swim, leaving Dagger to swim after him with a power sander to shred his teeth down. 
Boss fails getting tangled in the pussy. Daggett once again reminds his brother of the mistake he's making. But still, Norv does not care. Dag's second attempt at this was to pretend to be a German dentist. Try is using a laser to incinerate his teeth. But this backfires when Norv blocks the laser with a mirror. And causes the sign of his stand to crash down on him. <laughs> Norv finally decides to promise his brother to wear his teeth down. But on their way, they get recognition from the forest, from the other animals, causing Norbert to go back on his promise and betray Daggett. The scene fades later to that day, where Daggett is sitting in a secluded area, on the forest sitting on a log, and eating another log, the same as you would eat corn on the cob. He sits lonely by himself, still angry that his brother refused to chew, as some ducks flew over him. Fine! Don't chew! Daggett grumbles while eating the log, some of the pieces lying out of his mouth while he talks. Just don't come crying to me when your teeth are going out of your nose, ma'am! He fumes before going back to chewing on the log. He chews on it so fast, he starts sounding like a jackhammer on concrete. As he continues for a few seconds before hearing a voice from this distance saying something, making him stop and looking towards that direction. Hey Norby, check out my teeth! It was the voice of a squirrel. One who was one of the first three forest animals to notice and praise Norbert's teeth. The other two were Big Rabbit, a large rabbit with a Jersey accent, that Norbert and Daggett were friends with, and a muskrat. The, the squirrel now had long teeth and showed them to Norbert, who snaps his fingers in approval. Soon after, all of the forest animals surrounded Norbert and snapped their fingers as well as Daggett peeked from under a rock. Dag is completely frozen in place and shocked at all the attention his brother was getting. As the log on the car stuck on his teeth fell with a thud noise. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tree Flower was walking through the forest, prettying up her hair for Norbert and putting in some brand new flower earrings she got. Trying to look as beautiful as she could for her new boyfriend. As she's walking by, she stops in her tracks, noticing Norbert standing on a rock with his long teeth, catching her attention and making her feel a certain type of way. Tree Flower rubbed her chest gently up and down with her finger. Norby's teeth are long. Oh, how I love that. <laughs> Norbert takes notice of this and decides to make a manly pose for her while winking at her, causing her to blush and giggle ever so giddily before walking over to him. Your teeth look so dangerous. She says as her eyes were fixated on his long teeth, with Norbert noticing and giving her a very smug look. Tree Flower starts to give him a seductive look and sweetly asks, Can I rub them? Norbert, being the good boyfriend that he is to her, proclaims, Knock yourself out, babe. I insist. Thus making Tree Flower instantly happy and giggled. Tree Flower then gets closer to his teeth and began rubbing them gently with one hand on his teeth and the other on her chest. Oh, Norby. She sighs lovingly as she is now aroused because of him and her eyes clearly showing this. 
You're so cool. She tells him while swooning for him, before cuddling close and continuing with, You're giving me chills. <laughs> she giggled once more. So, you like me with long teeth, don't you, sweetie? Norbert asks while wrapping his arm around her, making his girlfriend even more relaxed than she already was. Oh, yes, I do. I think they're very cute. Shreeflower emphasized with him, rubbing his soft, hairy chest up and down gently, making him feeling relaxed. Hey, Tree Flower, you want to start our date now? We can head over to your dam together and watch some monster movie Monday tonight. I hear they're supposed to be airing The Crawling Spleen too. I thought you'd never ask. Absolutely, Norby. Norbert reached out of his arm for her to take. As it made her giggle, and she took it. They started the romantic day together, with the forest animals cheering for Norbert as they left. Meanwhile, Taggart watched every second of this, completely frothing with bitterness, hatred, and pure anger. He is completely and utterly jealous at how much attention and popularity Norbert was getting. He spits the log out and tosses it aside. If he can be Mr. Cool, so can I! For the rest of the day, Daggett tried various artificial methods to make his teeth even longer than Norbert's. One such method including pouring plant food on his teeth, which didn't work at all and only made more trees and plants sprout all over his face and burst through the river of them. <laughs> Another method was tying his teeth to multiple horses and firing off a pink ping pong ball gun. See, that's pretty dangerous. To make them run and stretch his teeth out. But this also didn't work and resulted in the rope snapping and making Daggett tumble into the bathroom or onto the toilet. It is now night time at Tree Flowers Dam. 816 to be exact, Norbert and Treeflower are snuggled up together on the couch watching The Crawling Spleen 2. As Treeflower rested her shoulder on her boyfriend's head, and Norbert with his arm around his girlfriend. Oh, Norby, I love spending time with you like this. Treeflower says while twirling his hair around with a finger. I couldn't agree more, sweetheart. You want to rub my teeth again? I would love to. Trevor then starts rubbing Norbert's teeth again, making him feel relaxed and snuggling ever so closer to him, stealing his warmth as she giggled. <laughs> You're the most perfect man I've ever met, Norbert Beaver. And you're the most perfect woman I've ever met, Tree Flower. <laughs> Tree Flower started blushing and leans in to kiss Norbert on the lips. Norbert goes along with this and starts kissing her back. Their tongues swirl around each other and dance around. They quietly moan under their breaths. They continue for a few minutes until Tree Flower gets an idea. Hey, Norby. Wanna continue upstairs in my bedroom? She asks in a soft tone. Wait, this is a kid's cartoon, right? Eh, well, it's a fact. Like, I don't think anyone will give a shit. Of course I would. Norbert replies lovingly to her. Trevor then takes Norbert by the hand as they head upstairs to her room. When they finally go upstairs, Norbert is surprised to find how absolutely nice her bedroom looks. The door is a bead string door, with lava lamps on the shelf, 
a stereo with hippie music, discs right next to it on the nightstand, and her bed is a grunge bed with hippie decorations all around it. Lobot sees all of this and is most impressed of how beautiful and vibey it is. Oh my! Did you do all of this yourself? This looks... this looks amazing! Tree flower blushes and replies. Why, thank you, Norby. Yes, I did all of this myself. But the problem is it gets a little lonely here sometimes when it's just me. She looks at Norbert and gives him another seductive look while she talks. Oh my. If only I could share it with a big, strong, manly beaver whose name begins with letter N. <laughs> She giggles cutely. Oh, well, you don't have to feel alone here anymore, sweetheart. After that, Norbert lays down on her comfy bed and gives Tree Flower another seductive look right back at her while rubbing his fluffy chest. Tree Flower flutters her eyelashes so slowly and lovingly. She gets on top of Norbert and starts kissing him again. <laughs> Share a blissful moment under the covers together. Norbert licks Treefower's nose and kisses it, making her giggle softly. Norby, I am really glad I get to see you again. I'm really glad too, Tree. All that time I was separated from you was really difficult for me. I really missed how soft your hair was, how beautiful your eyes looked, how soothing your voice is, and especially how much you make me smile. You really are my everything. Norbert completely is touched by these words. No woman has ever had such things to say about him. Not even the occasional crushes he had back in his school days. He must have done something well in his past life to deserve such a thing like this. I couldn't agree more. When I had all my adventures with Daggett over the last few months, all I thought about was you. I fulfilled my lifelong dream of becoming a Lipazaner Stallion because I knew it's what you would have wanted for me and that if I gave up, you would just think I'm just like all the other spoots that gave up. And when I was stranded on that island because I had stinky toe, the one thing that was on my mind was not getting to see you again and that you'd be devastated if I was gone and... Tree Fowler was impacted by these words as she realizes Norbert had some deep-rooted insecurities deep inside him. All the hardships he's experienced in his 16 years of life. disappointed in you. You are capable of very amazing things. And I know that if you ever feel like you're not good enough, then just remember that I will be here to support you and help you get back on your feet to help you be successful. I really do care about you. And I want you to feel like you matter. Because you do. Norbert smiles at her word and hugs her tightly under the covers, his lawn teeth wrapping around her, making her feel safe and protected. I care about you so much, sweetie. You make me feel so appreciated in ways that I have never felt before I met you. All these years I felt like I wasn't good enough to be anything. And all my life my parents respected my, my brother more than they respected me. It doesn't help that my dad always embarrassed me and made me feel like a loser every time I couldn't do something right. Oh my, I'm so sorry to hear that happen to you. Did you ever tell anyone you were feeling that way? Freefeller asks, concerned for her boyfriend's mental health. No, there was nobody for me to talk to, so I just had to bottle up my emotions for so many years. Oh, Norby. That's not good for your mental health. You need to tell someone how you're feeling. I'll always be here for you to talk in case you're feeling stressed or anxious or just having a bad day in general. 
tree flower tells him as she strokes his hair to calm him down. Thanks, tree flower. You really do make me feel safe and loved. You're welcome, Narby. You know, I think I might keep these long teeth just for you. I would love that. Just make sure you don't grow them too long. You know what happens if you do. Yes, I know. Okay. I'm just looking out for my boyfriend, that's all. <laughs> Tree Flower smiles before giggling softly. She starts to yawn from their cuddling as it made her sleepy. Ah, I'm getting tired. We should probably get some sleep. Yeah, you're right. I'm getting kind of tired myself. Good night, Norby. Good night, Tree Flower. I love you. I love you too, Norby. Norba and Tree Flower then share one last kiss together before drifting off to sleep, all cozied up and nestled into each other's arms. Both grateful for being with one the other. The following morning is now September 17th, same year, as Norbert wakes up early to see that it's 6.28am and sees the sun rising over the mountains with pine trees surrounding the forest. He gets up from Tree Flower's bed and straightens his hair, not wanting to leave her down with a bad case of bedhead. I mean, who wouldn't really? His girlfriend feels that he is no longer in her arms, and flutters her eyelashes open. Mm, good morning, Norby. Good morning, Tree Flower. What are you doing? Well, I'm pretty sure that Daggett's wondering where I've been, so I should probably skedaddle the black comb before he starts questioning me. Okay. Ah. 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 Tree Flower yawned before getting out of bed and gave him a farewell hug and goodbye kiss on his cheek multiple times, which made our Norbert blush. Goodbye, Norby. Hopefully we'll see each other again soon. Tree Flower says before looking at his overgrown inside holes again. And hopefully... I'll get to see you again too, my little lovelies. Mwah. She says in a cute and affectionate way before giving them a single kiss, leaving a lipstick mark on them. Bye, Tree Flower. I love you, my sweet, sweet, eternal golden daisy of the flower patch. I love you too, Norby. Norbert gave one last kiss to Tree Flower, and he leaves her them. Having a romantic, memorable night with her, becoming a much happier beaver. As Norbert walks home, he thinks to himself about how perfect his girlfriend is, lucky he is to be with her. After a few minutes of walking, Norbert finally arrives home and goes back inside his humble abode. The end.